Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. This video is a little unusual in that I've only ever done commentaries of my own games on the channel before and never commentating other people's. But someone sent me this recording and I thought it was just such an entertaining game that I had to share it with you guys. So to give you an idea of the skill levels here, I think both players were around or maybe just below 1000 ELO on Definitive Edition. So they're definitely competent and know the basics, but aren't really on that expert level that maybe you're used to seeing on YouTube videos. So the map itself is hideout. So of course you start with a palisade wall around your base. And this palisade wall though has 250 HP and even the house is 550 in the dark age. So you can keep out maybe one scout, but if they are rushing you with an army of units, you're really not gonna keep them out for very long. Personally, I think that gives the map a really interesting dynamic. It's sort of like arena in that you have that wall, but it's basically anything except skirmishers are gonna be able to break through it pretty quickly. And they, of course, do share this forest in between. This map kind of reminds me of those disguise glasses that you get from the dollar store with the nose and the, the little glasses. Anyway, maybe that's why it's called Hideout. I don't know. So far, players seem pretty similar in their builds. And you see some little inefficiencies, like uh, taking from multiple of the sheep and goats at the same time. Not a huge deal, but it does waste a bit of food. And so the player in the red is the Aztecs. Of course, very strong civilization. Great on Arena or Arabia, and this is kind of a sort of cross in between those. So should be quite a good civilization, obviously with a great economy. And these are players that, of course, who were Bors. And actually, their Dark Ages seem very similar to me, doing a lot of the same things for both of them. And the other player in the blue, I can't believe I didn't mention it yet, is playing as the Japanese. Already, that gives us an interesting matchup of two very strong infantry civilizations. And I think both players here are actually housed at the same time. Both of them just building houses now. <laughs> it's actually very easy to get uh, pop cats at 15 population because you make your first two houses and then you kind of forget to make more. So everybody does that, or at least I do that. You can see Blue handling it by making four more houses to not let that happen again for a while. Yeah, so in terms of strategy here, I do find hideouts kind of interesting because you can try to fast castle it in the same way you would an arena map because you feel kind of safe. But like I said, just about any unit, even a couple of scouts, would be able to break through a palisade wall fairly quickly. So I think it's a little bit safer to go for some aggression, but at the same time you don't want to go for aggression in the other person's fast castles, and then you can't do any damage to them. So if you are going to do aggression, you really have to make the most of it, and at least take out a couple villagers, or really disrupt the opponent's economy. If you're okay at defending though, I think at this level you can quite often get away with just a fast castle. That is not going to be the strategy that Blue goes for in this case, though. Uh, Blue is actually already going up to the Feudal Age. It has a barracks up, so it could be thinking about men in arms, which you totally could do as Japanese. They get the faster attacking infantry in Feudal Age. And no sign of a, a barracks yet from the other player, though. We know it's no militia coming out here from Japanese yet. Hard to say. There's a few ways this could be played. It's a lot on gold, though, you notice, which I think could signify archers and... I mean, maybe if you're doing a lot of men-at-arms, you'd get some on gold, but you wouldn't get this many. This is enough for more than one range. And you can see the archer range is coming down there. And just slightly behind, actually, in terms of timing, is the Aztec player. And we see throwing down a market and blacksmith, which implies, obviously, fast castle. Although I'm not sure why we'd make the barracks then, because you don't need the barracks to the fast castle, right? But I guess you need it sooner or later. Even the four on gold, like this just feels very much like a completely naked fast castle here. He is idling the town center here to try to wait for 800 food. But I think it should be able to click up here pretty soon. He's got plenty on berries. Oh, just ran out of berries. <laughs> just 22 food short. Feels bad, man. Okay, just got enough. I guess those deer helped him out. So he's going to be clicking up to castle age. And should be up sometime around, what is that, like 18 minutes? Whereas, see, the other player, unfortunately housed, uh, is going for the archers, getting all the upgrades there on that, and hasn't made anything yet with the barracks. And now we see men-at-arms coming out. So we're going to have a combination of men-at-arms and a lot of archers with all their upgrades, which is good. We're even getting forging and everything. I do want to remember the upgrades. Although in this case, I think it might be nice to go out a little bit faster in pressure. But I think it just wants to go out with proper numbers when he feels good and safe. And nothing wrong with that. Both actually doing quite a good job scouting, I notice, with their units all around the map here. Housed again. 
blue. You gotta get like a house building villager. There you go. Yep, and just make a ton of houses. Perfect. And so we have blue coming in here, attacking about 19 minutes, but with a pretty sizable army here with all of their upgrades, like I said. Bashing through that palisade wall, that did not offer a lot of protection. And targeting the gold here, which is actually pretty smart because, of course, red is Castle Age now, but the problem is there's not really much you can make that's new in Castle Age without gold. Just spears and skirmishers. Also having to put up a defensive watchtower here, and luckily it seems to have enough stone for that, even after making, looks like, two other town centers. And unfortunately, coming in a, a little bit too late with this raid, that now these three town centers are up. Although, interestingly, a 10 villager lead for blue. Wow, that's a lot. I think he got four villagers on the gold right away after breaking down the wall, and I still think Red's probably been idling his town center in order to be that far behind in total villager count. So not making use of all of those. And this is a nice, actually, like this response coming out with the mangonel. Didn't realize that he actually had gold here off to the side, so that's gonna be a challenge. No. I don't know how that didn't hit all of those archers right there. Oh, ouch. Yep. Even coming out repairing. Nice. Nice move here by Red. And that defensive tower gonna get a little bit of value. Kinda keeps the units away from the town center without necessarily garrisoning it with everything. And remember these units, ooh. They do have their upgrades, so they'll hold up a little bit to this fire. I think it probably is worth it hanging out here, kind of taking some of these shots and... Oh, all those archers. Oh, man. <laughs> mangonels. You can get a lot of value from mangonels. Mangonels running away from the town center. No, no, no. Gotta go under the town center. Gonna repair it? Okay. Nope. And I do see blue finally clicking up to Castle Age, though, so should get there around 26 minutes, maybe a little bit after. 26, 27 minutes. And coming out with another wave of archers and men-at-arms being very aggressive and actually a huge villager advantage. Still more than 10 villagers ahead. I guess Red lost a few villagers and I think he's been idling the town center. Well, now he's got a couple of them working. So far though, this actually hasn't gone too bad for Red, who did basically a naked fast castle and is still the score lead here. And he's survived this all right. He, he is behind in villagers, but when you got three town centers, and remember, Blue's town center is researching the castle age right now, so he's not even making new villagers. And was he getting pushed off that gold again? I think he's just give up on that gold and just okay. go back to this one. Might be smart actually to try to plug that gap in the wall again, or maybe even stonewall this if you're really committed to just trying to boom and play very defensively right now. Just feels like it's hard to get back on your feet when you're constantly having to be raided by these archers running around your base. And the question is, what do you do here if you're blue as you hit the next age and you don't really have... Let's see, that's Red's resources. Actually, you know what? He's got a lot of resources. So he should be able to upgrade all these units and keep his pressure up if he wants to. You sometimes feel really committed at this point, like you just need to keep pushing. And what do we have here coming up? A monastery, okay. Kind of makes sense. Oh, nice. So, yeah, blue found these villagers off to the side, which is nice. He's even setting villagers around the other side. I guess to make some military buildings. And nice, getting those upgrades. He's got crossbowmen now, and he's even prioritizing the attack and range upgrades, which is definitely the right call here. Now, the same range as in Mangonel. A little bit easier to avoid them. And coming forward, this is what I like to see, just complete all-in aggression here as Japanese. Just hasn't given Red a break this entire game, just nothing but pressure. Let's see, so we're coming out with mangonels, probably crossbows, yep. And kind of giving up on the men-at-arms. I don't know how I feel about making men-at-arms. Oh, we've actually even gone into long swordsmen now. And the most aggressive tower, I think, I can remember seeing in a really long time. This is great, I mean, even if you does garrison this town center, assuming that he sees that. I mean, you have to garrison a lot of villagers to take that down. This is so aggressive. I can't believe Red missed that. Oh, I'm still getting some Mangonel battles. Killing his own villager there. Actually, villager number is very, very close at the moment, which is interesting because Red reached Castledge eight minutes sooner, I think, something like that. Like 18 minute versus 26 minute Castle Age. 
and having three town centers and yeah, blue's still just on one town center. But imagine to get enough kills here. And this is just mayhem. We have all sorts of units running around. We have long swordsmen coming, being streamed in from here. I'm not even sure that red knows. Let's see if it's red. Okay, so red does know about that. And what do you do if you're red right now? You feel so trapped in your base. And trying to come up with military units. Both actually very low military numbers. Sort of eight versus five military units here. And unfortunately, no upgrades in those skirmishers, and you have uh, some armor on the swordsman. And it looks like he's doubling down into the skirmishers and crossbows. I think keep making the mangonels, though. They seem to be giving a lot of value. One thing you have to think about is this gold could start running out, and blue's doing a really good job controlling the gold on this side. Get some nice mangonel shots there. And Blue actually taking the score lead now. So sometimes it pays to go in with that hyper aggression. And back up to a, a decent villager lead, actually. Not sure if he's got wheelbarrow or not, because I saw Red just came in with that. Yeah, these one town center pushes. Wow, that's a lot of food. What do you do with that food? I think you make a market and you balance that a little bit. <laughs> I wonder how many trees were there. I only see one one chopped tree there for that lumber camp. Why not, man? Japanese cheaper lumber camp. And a very aggressive castle here. This actually, this castle could be huge. It's controlling two different stone piles. And I don't think red has another stone pile. They sort of cut off on this side. And he doesn't have another stone that he can go to. So this castle could be pretty big. That said, red does have the military advantage here, so he could move out. We'll see if he notices this and can move out and try to take that. Yeah, but just not quite enough military units here, I think, to defend this castle. Two-thirds up, but no, he's got to abandon it there. The villagers go around and, yeah, get picked off by red. So nice defense there by red. Need more mangonels, though. Got to keep making those. Mangonels are doing all the work here for red, I think. Nice job there, but unfortunately all the villagers are gone. Hmm. So like I said, that castle is really well placed. It was like two-thirds up, I think. Yeah. And here come the villagers. We've got eight villagers coming out to finish this. Unfortunately, still not enough units. Oh, no. Right into the train of mangonels. Just going to take them out. Oh, yeah. Well... <laughs> They went the villager lead. That was eight villagers taken out, just like that, and we're back to almost equal villager numbers here. That archery range never got built. And now, where are we at? 84%, and what are you gonna do? Send 20 more villagers off to their death? I think you just gotta give up that castle. And, yeah, that's really too bad. I think it's, unfortunately, it's so far along, you get almost no stone, even for deleting it. You probably get 100 stone back for that. But what are you going to do if he takes it all down, you lose all the stone. And we do see him coming forward with a few more villagers to try to sneak it. I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, so he deletes it. Really unfortunate there. And red off to a huge score lead now, successfully defending that. Interesting though, these crossbows have no upgrades on them. Just imagine how much better they would be doing with even just a little bit more range. And actually, I'm starting to really like red's position at the moment. It's kind of keeping an eye, like he's not really feeling pressure on this side anymore. And now this side's obviously feeling pretty good. 27 military to zero military. Blue has zero military right now. So he is on three town centers and still a 10 villager lead. I think it's just being a little bit more on top of, I was gonna say it's more on top of uh, queuing up villagers, but he's got no villagers queued up at the moment, so. Hmm. <laughs> okay, and Red doing a nice job moving out here. What have we got? Some houses. Just grab a little bit of map space. I see some units coming out here. The, these long swordsmen again. Just being really annoying and having a sneaky little barracks here. I like it. And where our population's at. So, yeah, right off to a, a really big military advantage. I think something happens psychologically, though, when you're rushed that aggressively and you're up against someone who does this big all-in-one town center push on you. It, you are a little bit nervous to push out after that. 
And even still, like, Blue's finding ways to raid here with much less military. And I think it's just being annoying here. I don't even think he cares too much about getting value. He's just trying to make, put Red psychologically on the defensive. And Red is definitely on the defensive. Like, he's keeping these units here. Like, he doesn't know that if he were to push out right now, there's nothing Blue could do to stop it. Although, Score Lead should probably tell him that he's... He either has a lot more buildings or he has a lot more military units. Be that far ahead. And coming up with a nice defensive castle yeah. here. I like that because it actually protects not only these stones, but also this gold. This gives you sort of a launching place. And actually going Imperial Age now. Let's see, so we're 54 minutes, so it will be like a 56 minute Imperial Age. And I hope Blue's thinking about Imperial Age here pretty soon. He's got the resources, and there he goes. Heading up to the next stage. Got to start thinking at this point actually about, yeah, I was just going to say relics and thinking about where your long-term gold source is going to be from here or if you're going to transition into trash units. I think that's just about the last of the gold that Red has. You can see Red's starting to get upgrades now. That's good. Actually, a lot of upgrades coming in for both players. So Red hits Imperial Age here, and Red's definitely queuing up all those. I think that's... That's good. They remember to do those, and probably should make a trebuchet. Because think about like what does Imperial Age really get you? It's a lot of resources to put in, and it ends up getting you a lot of upgrades and trebuchets, basically. So it's nice to try to make use of those if you can. And meanwhile, Blue has his own, and he's making samurai. I like it. So we've got 54 to 11 military, but still making Red feel like he's under some pressure here and trying to attack these buildings. I mean, it'll get cleaned up, but it's still... For having such a large 1,500 score lead at this point... Yeah, Red's just feeling very defensive, it seems, and not pushing out. I don't I don't think he knows how little Blue actually has over here. And Blue actually starting to focus more on his economy here. And I'm sure Red's doing the same, kind of after so much early pressure. He just wants to get his economy set up and everything. And this is funny, you got to kind of keep an eye on this. So let's see, does Blue even know? No, Blue thinks that this tree line is back here. And in reality, nope, it's up here. And he doesn't even have any of this in sight, so he won't actually know if that happens. Yeah, you'll see players sometimes put outposts along that just to try to keep an eye on that. And also, he probably doesn't have Town Watch. He can't, yeah, he would need Town Watch there to see that. Always got to get Town Watch in these closed maps like Black Forest and, uh, and Hideout. Hideout especially, because they're right there. We also see Red sneaking around, building a castle now on this side. Although Blue's got a sneaky villager over here grabbing this gold. That's a really good idea. I'd actually put a town center on that, just to try to get some villagers out and snag that up, because I think that's the last gold on the map. And unfortunately, sending all these villagers over, and he's actually just going to show Red where this is right now. So now he's trying to get away, splitting him up. <laughs> he's going to try to... Oh, you might actually get it. Oh, there's one hit away. And meanwhile, we have finally a big push here from Red. I guess Onager has given him some confidence here to come out. Although, Castle Down, I think actually uh, Blue pushed that out there. And obviously has Cataprudo. Like, packed up really fast. So many things going on in this map. This game is just everything happening everywhere. So I think this castle is going to go up. It does have the villager. It secured the gold. And still have some random units running around. This barracks is still alive, apparently, and still making <laughs> the odd two-handed swordsman. And this castle, I think that might be his only castle. Yeah, that is his only castle. And it seems to be going into elite samurai, already teched into it, got the elite upgrade, so you put all that in and then to lose the castle, so he really doesn't want to, so he's trying to repair that castle right now. Finally getting all the upgrades there for the Aztecs. It's a nice job. So they have six attack, and I think these guys have five armor. Yeah, so he's got five pierce armor and six attack, so each of those skirmishers does one damage to the elite samurai. And actually successfully chopped through there. <laughs> I don't even think Blue knows. Does Blue know about this now? No, he still doesn't, right on the edge of his line of sight. Does not know that there's an opening between their bases here. And this castle's still not up. I can't believe it. I don't know how he's managed to deny this. I'd almost focus on the villager. 
Oh, but in come the Eagles. Ooh, that was a nice shot. Wow. Yeah, Mangonels are really good against mass units. You just get incredible trades. And where are villagers at now? So they're still about around 10 villagers ahead. And I don't know if they're still making villagers. Neither one seems to be making villagers anymore. Uh, it would be nice if they get up to more like 120 villagers. I think it's kind of the sweet spot. I guess anywhere between 100 and 130. I guess kind of depends what unit you're making. But <laughs> they're just casually walking through. Just imagine being blue here right now. I mean, like, wait, where did this come from? What's happening? <laughs> They just go through. I think they're heading down to that gold. Yeah, which they should. I mean, it's the last gold on the map. And especially if you're starting to make eagles now. So we have Elite Eagle Warrior, although missing a few uh, defensive upgrades. And still outnumbering military. It's about 4 to 1 military for red right now. But I still think he's a little bit too defensive here. He's finally moving in with the eagles I see down here. And finally trying to clean up this barracks. Barracks has been there for 40 minutes or more. And these eagles are going to be good. They don't have all of their pierce armor, but they still have five pierce armor, which is pretty good against the seven attack town centers. And I don't think blue sees this. This villager number is dropping by the second. Now almost a 30 villager difference between the two players. Red now has one and a half times blue's economy going into an hour and 10 minutes. And he's got to know pretty soon that there's a gap here. Meanwhile, pushing on the other side, doesn't even care. He's sending his military out. They're like, well, if he's raiding me back home, then that means his units aren't in his base. So we have sort of this raiding and counter raiding happening right now. I'm not sure if he's going to remember to get the extra attack on there, to get the eight attack. I don't know if he's going to have the gold to afford that, actually. So I gotta get those upgrades early, because once you get to a little bit later, once the gold runs out, it, it's really hard to justify those upgrades anymore. And these samurai running around, they are gonna see this castle. And maybe deny it'd be pretty great if they could destroy the castle instead of the villagers. And prevent it from getting deleted. Yeah, this is gonna be a little bit of a messy game though, so we finally cleared that up. 37 villagers to 103 villagers for red. Wow, and this extremely aggressive castle being put down. So luckily, I think Blue does know about this now. Uh, I don't know if he got Town Watch there. Looks like he might. And coming up with a counter castle of his own, but the other castle's at about 50%. He's trying to trap it down right now. I think that's definitely the right call. And all of these dying to what? Maybe an Onager or something. Seems like Red did successfully defend that side, though. And now all the focus seems to be on where these castles are. And it looks like he might actually... Oh, we got the eagles coming in. Both are just trying to stop the other from building this castle. I, whoever gets this castle up controls this whole area. And there's no way once one castle goes up to be able to get the other. But managing to destroy it with those mangonels. I guess the trebuchet probably helped too, hey? Still, what's our... Yeah, it's starting to get a little bit closer in terms of villagers, but not really. We're at 86 against 33 villagers. And these Mangonels are going to get some nice value here against the Elite Skirmishers. The gold is uh, becoming a very important thing. We have eight gold miners, and we have zero gold miners. Although, let's see, does this tell me relics? So we've got three relics for blue. So blue actually does have a little bit of a long-term income there. And blue, for some reason, didn't grab this relic. <laughs> oh, I guess he's making this right now. He's probably going to go grab that. Yeah, because gold becomes so important. I like that... Blue managed to get this up though, because that other cast was at 50% before this even started, so that's pretty impressive. And Red trying to rebuild and trying to reboom. <laughs> Blue's trying to reboom a little bit. Fair enough. He's up to 43 villagers. He's gonna come back. And let's see what's how many town centers does Red have? So Red's on down to just two town centers here, and now trying to build defensive castle. I think you need some trebuchets here. Good, I like that he's making that. And I'm a little surprised no more Eagle Warriors from Red. I guess he's just out of gold, because, oh, here they come. Yeah, because that was really effective. And you, even if you don't pick up very many villagers, all of these villagers are garrison in these town centers doing nothing. And Samurai here can be pretty nice against basically everything that 
Aztec player is doing right now. And scores are actually getting pretty close again. Red has had a pretty sizable advantage. Still almost double the villagers. Hard to say because, you know, more idle and everything. But it's got to be much larger income for Red in terms of resources right now. And this castle... you got to take out this trebuchet. I think we can hold this castle for now. No, as soon as these eagles get in there, I think that castle's probably going to go down. Yeah, no, you can't stop that now. And what's happening over here? Oh, but taking down this other castle and being charged by villagers. Done that a few times now, I notice, against Siege. And it's effective. I mean, he's got the villagers to spare, I guess, so you might as well try to get some use out of him. Oh, I didn't even see that. So Blue's got a castle down here to defend the gold. That's good, that's gold. That gold is huge at this point in the game. And Bolt is getting absolutely destroyed in terms of villagers. Down to 21 villagers to 58 villagers in an hour 23 into the game. And these eco warriors might actually be able to take this town center down. They don't still don't have all of their defensive upgrades, and they also don't have, of course, the unique unit giving them four more attack or the unique tech. Sorry. <laughs> just love 21 villagers to 59 villagers. And we just have Samurai running around through one base while we have Eco Warriors running around the other. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to take that down. I, I think those defensive upgrades might have made a difference there. Hard to say. All the focus right now at least seems to be on that middle area between the two. What, three castles try to go up? All of them are gone. We now have treading down this castle again. Nothing but Samurai. And all of those upgrades, just think about all those upgrades they got and how much value they're giving over the long run. I'm going to see a big fight here. This... Oh, they just run right past each other. <laughs> Whoops. And Samurai should clean this up pretty easily. The Eagle Warriors, they don't count as a unique unit, so you don't get the plus 10 from the Samurai. But Samurai do have, as most infantry unique units, they have a slight bonus against Eagle Warriors. I think it's like plus 2, plus 3 or something like that. And more of these Eagles. These Eagles are so much gold. But if it lets you destroy the economy, it's now got more than triple. Oh, that happened fast. So like five times Blue's number of villagers. And Blue's got two town centers left, right there and right there. That's it. And probably about to lose another 10 villagers here, or however many villagers he has. Actually, I'm going to send back the samurai. And yeah, they should be able to clean up these, these eagles pretty easily. I mean, there were, like, equal numbers there at the start of that fight. Samurai are crazy against eagles. And they're even going to be good against these skirmishers, so I... I think until the Aztec player starts showing you crossbows, you got to keep going. Or with the Arblast, sorry. Is, I think, would be the right counter to this. Still, though, we're looking at five villagers for blue. <laughs> We've got four gold miners over here. And we've got now two, two farmers over here. So we're six villagers up against 71 villagers. And very similar military numbers. I do like these Arblasts. You just need a little bit more. You need more of a critical mass there. And both of them just completely gutting each other's bases. These eagles are running around. There's just nothing to raid anymore. Because he's got six villagers. He has no idea where they are. And meanwhile, just these trebuchets wrecking. You know, Blue should really come in and grab this relic. I think he's going to need the relics. I should include that here, so he's got six villagers and I think four relics. I think he picked up that one that was here. And so, what do you do as blue here? I guess you try to reboom, and you just have to keep, like, you have to keep these trebuchets alive. Does he still have a castle? Oh, he's still got two castles, so he can make those every once in a while, but you just see the resources are going to start to dwindle. But zero wood income at the moment. So, five more trebuchets, and that's it for wood. Just a ridiculous game. Ridiculous. And just this war of attrition right now where both of them have, I mean, six villagers obviously kind of extreme, but even to only have 60 something right now. It's still queuing up so many eagle warriors. So he's got four barracks, he's queuing them up from here it looks like. So he's just sending another wave of four every time he can get the gold. I think he's probably selling at the market at this point. Just collecting wood, rebuilding. Yeah, I think you got to transition right now from Eagle Warriors into Arbalest if you want to fight off these Samurai. And I don't think Blue knows much about 
where Red is. He knows these houses are up here. As far as he's concerned, there's nothing out here, but of course, meanwhile, Red's rebuilding. Kind of sneaky with his 60 villagers. Meanwhile, he has no idea. Oh, now he's just found where Blue's base is here. Uh-oh. <laughs> Poor Blue. And that's half his economy right there. He's only got 10 villagers, and that's five of them. Meanwhile, we just have this one army he can't stop of samurai and just this handful of trebuchets. I mean, Japanese trebuchets, mind you. So pack, unpack really fast. Nice, I'm getting a conversion there. I think that's actually a good idea. Guys, I mean, it's not like Blue can really make too many more of these. And he's got six trebuchets now, so not bad. He's still trying to make trebuchets. And trying to sneak out the odd. I really wish I could see what the market prices were right now. I don't know if I can do that. Uh, no, I don't think I can. Nope. That's too bad. I really want to know what the market prices are, because I think both players are having to re rely a lot on using the market. Oh, Blue's starting to rebuild down here, so he's now got 11 villagers. And just, yeah, again, these skirmishers, just not quite enough attack, so they're going to be doing two damage to the samurai each shot. They have seven attack, and the samurai have five, five armor. And good job actually noticing that and taking those. And even Red slowly dwindling down in villager numbers. And I think part of it is just these successful little raids. You sneak one unit in there. And that's a lot of skirmishers. Even getting the trebuchets involved in there. And trying to attack them. And Blue actually jumping out to a bit of a score lead here. And I'm not even sure what that's coming from. I guess uh, just a lot more kills. Certainly not coming from villager numbers. We're 15 villagers against 38 villagers in an hour 47 minutes. Like, that's ridiculous. I, you guys know, that's ridiculous. <laughs> We're at 15 to 30 villagers, and it's just coasting on the resources they already had. Although, of course, you know, Red does have a lot more resources at the moment. He's got 8,000 wood at the moment. He's been chopping over here in Blue's base, and Blue's just still trying to stream any samurai that he possibly can. Blue still actually got a bit of gold. He's still got 1,700 gold. Those relics are making a huge difference right now, that four relics. And now, guys, we're on equal villager numbers right now. Both of them have 15 villagers. And Red is trying to rebuild again. He's got his market. He's got to sell his wood for as much gold as he can. I think the play is to make a lot of arbalests. What else do you do, you do against this? I, you don't have hand cannoneers. You don't have any sort of cavalry. Since Red's Aztecs. So what's the play here? He's queuing up a bunch of eagle warriors. And I mean, if he gets enough of them, he probably could overwhelm the samurai, but it's nowhere near cost effective. And you can see selling all of that wood. He had 8,000 wood like one minute ago. And it's all gone, and it's all going into as many Eagle Wars as he can. He's trying to build houses. We're on 11, 12 villagers each. And for some reason, transitioning into two-handed swordsmen. I guess even better attack bonus against eagles, actually, for the two-handed swordsmen. And both this, this is it. Like, this is all their resources into these last two armies coming forward, still managing to have the trebuchets. And one massive fight here, huge advantage here for Blue in terms of that unit matchup, and just cleans up those eagles, and that's it. Red calls it, so somehow Blue completes the most ridiculous comeback I have seen in a long time, to say the least. Japanese have never been my favorite civilization more than watching this game. I think what did it for me was when it was 70 or 80 villagers for Red, and I think Blue had four at one point and just had the perfect unit choice. I mean, if I were to say maybe one thing that Red could have done to prevent that comeback, I think it just comes down to unit choice and maybe just not knowing the Eagles take that extra bonus damage from Swordsman, which is why it's so important to know those, those counters and to know what units to make. But even then, not to take anything away from, from Blue or Red, I think both played a very entertaining game 
and both showed a lot of heart, a lot of resilience. It's hard to play for two hours, man, even if that's 1.7 speed. It's hard to play that long, and it's such a messy game from Red being attacked on all sides, and it just put him in really defensive position there. Crazy, crazy game, and here's the bases. Here's Red's base, right? Here's Blue's base. <laughs> just ridiculous. So let's check out some of these stats. And like this, I think it was like 250, 250 at one point. Like they were very, very similar. And then Red just got, or blue, sorry, Blue just got so much value against all the skirmishers and all the Eagle Warriors and everything. And those trebuchets just doing work against those buildings. And Red, of course, had the large villager lead. I mean, more than double the wood collected. Kind of close to double the stone. And more gold, more food, but at the end of the day, it's about getting that value in the long run. And you can see, of course, Red going for that fast castle. And 10 minutes extra in castle, but never really turned it into a villager advantage. He was under so much pressure. And that relic gold, of course, pretty huge. <laughs> what a silly game, man. Like, here's that light blue is all his villagers, and just villagers gone. Just nothing but military. Whereas Red still had all the villagers, but just never really got the military numbers going. And at the end of the day, military beats villagers. Anyway, I hope you guys like that game. And something definitely different for me to commentate a game on the channel. But, you know, you guys saw it. I had to share that one with you guys. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.